All right, welcome back, everybody. As you can see, quite a bit has changed with the convent. I scrapped the first video that I did. Now, that first video was, was just four hours of just playing around and getting used to. And honestly, it's the digital version of playing Legos. But it was it was my very first attempt in the very first four hours of using Unreal Engine 4. Um, and you saw what that video was. I mean, it wasn't bad. I was very satisfied and it definitely got me hooked. And as you can see, there are quite a bit of differences. I figured out how to put windows in. <clears throat> um, I've adjusted with, you know, I played with some lighting, so on and so forth. This is a recreation of the first scene after all of these cinematics are done. And I have to say, and I, I, I'm, I'm going to repeat some of the many things in several of these videos as I update them. But the level of appreciation for game development, VR experience, digital editing, my, my level of appreciation has skyrocketed. And just the amount of details is staggering. I, I didn't understand. I knew the rabbit hole went deep, but I didn't understand just how deep. You know, this is one of those things where you know I could I could explain how difficult something like this is and you'll comprehend every word that comes out of my mouth but unless you do it you don't really understand <laughs> and that's I, I and that was me I did not understand it's very overwhelming and so between working 45 to 50 hours a week at my job and trying to learn this this is really slow going but with the amount of time that i've spent the educational videos on youtube and the learning center of unreal engine 4 i think you could see the vast improvement first thing you might notice aside from the aesthetics is i have fixed the motion controller movement and i'll just give you a quick tour of the convent You can see I have a lot of placeholder stuff at the moment. This is a custom-made door that I did. <laughs> very crude, very primitive. And this door handle was, uh, this was spur of the moment. Oh my God, I need an 11, you know, 1100 AD door handle. What does that look like? Uh, screw it. I'll just manipulate something, you know, and the door hinges and nails and there's no door frame. But there were two real big challenges for me. And it varies between from person to person, obviously. But the two biggest challenges that I had to overcome and just getting to this point, A was geometry editing. Okay. What do I mean by that? Every object you see in here is a piece of geometry. And this, for example, this altar, um, you take basically a cylinder sphere, or I'm sorry, uh, what was it? I think it was a cylinder. And then you have to put the edges on it. Then you have to scale it. And then after that, you copy, you copy it, you move it up, you scale it down. But the whole thing was one gargantuan complete piece. So then you have to figure out how to slice it in half and oh my god like i said earlier it's staggering but determination relentlessness and stubbornness all combined you could see where i'm at right now but the geometry editing this doorway is a beautiful example of that the editing for this this doorway is actually three separate pieces okay this was one solid wall so what i did was i took a cube and I placed it into the wall, made it thicker so it protrudes out. Then I took a sphere and uh, I did the same thing. I measured it out. I tried to get the sphere and the cube into 
almost exact line alignment. At a glance, it looks pretty spot on. But if you get really close, you I don't know if you could really see it in the video, but you could see right about here. From it, It's not one smooth piece. It sort of sticks out a little bit. But I'm not... I'm not good enough to really to really fix that. So for now, you know, just getting I guess I'm really past getting my feet wet, but sort of learning how to swim in the shallow end. I'm just going to leave it as is right now and then just slowly improve over time. So the three pieces are the wall, a box, and a sphere. And adjusting the dimensions and everything else was was, was crazy. <laughs> it took so long. For something so simple but so when i when i had these box this box and the sphere placed where i wanted them i took those boxes or i took those objects and i made them subtractive and subtractive is like a negative object it just created a hole which allowed me to make the doorway so and you could see you know between um, the altar that there's just placeholder stuff that I'm going to manually go into another program called blender and create my own meshes. I don't want to use any of these beds. I'm going to create the, my own meshes with those and there and blender, same thing that I'm my, my first major, um, obstacle, like I said, is the geometry editing and trying to create a mesh or a prop, I mean, it's just insanely hard, especially when you know nothing. I keep hitting my, hang on, let me get back into the center of my room here and stop bumping into everything. Um, but just creating this, it's, it's absurd, and that's going to take quite a bit of time. Uh, the second really big challenge or obstacle for me was room scale. You can see this room is a lot bigger than the first video that I did. So room scale was, I mean, I could pop in and out. I'm in a preview mode right now, which allows me to sort of walk around and just check out my work at ground zero. Now, I watched a video on how to do this and the guy was very informative. And it's strange that something that's, that should really make a lot of sense, you just don't think of. But you can see this, this is the guy that I used as, um, as a frame of reference for room scale. Now, originally I just eyeballed everything. Okay. Because Kristoff in the game, when you come up to the side here, it came up to right about here, standing on my tippy toes. It, maybe it was a little bit lower, but give or take, it was about towards the top of his head. Okay. So I grabbed this guy. He's about, what is he, about six foot one, six foot two, somewhere around there, which I would assume that's about the size, the height Kristoff would have been. And I'm 5'11". So obviously this is going to be a little bit taller for me. So from the height of Kristoff Romuald, this was about right. And then from there, it was a matter of, okay, well, now I need a bed. So I took a prop that I, that I purchased on the marketplace and slapped it down. The very first prop I put in was the, was the sink. Oh, well, I guess as close to a sink as it was in the game for being in what, 1152 AD. And of course, then the table. So I slapped these two objects down. Now the, the, the sink, it's got another, it's got some protrusions out here, some slabs, something in the background, but what I, what I needed was about, what I really needed was the depth. So I placed those, those objects down and I scaled them roughly to about the size that would seem fitting for my, uh, my skeletal mesh, my mannequin over here. So just adjusting this room scale was, it was a lot harder than it seemed. And the next biggest thing and something I spent, I think like nine and a half hours yesterday, or 
were getting these damn windows. Okay, creating the window was no big deal. Same thing I did with the door. I just took a box or a cube, I slapped it in the wall, I made it subtractive, boom, I've got a I've got a hole in the in the wall. And originally I thought they had that same curve, so I spent an even you know, even more amount of time creating the the circular top. Well, come to find out, I, I jumped in Vampire the Masquerade in, inside the actual game is where I, I go by, you know, for my references for everything. And I go outside and the convent outside, all the windows are square. So I wasted all that time. That was fun. But hey, silver linings, you gain experience. So it, I, I took the... I took the holes, I slapped door frames in them. Now the, the starter content that comes with the game, you could slap a window in and it's just a window, but well, it's not just a window in the game, it's stained glass. Now I wanted to take that a little bit further and I wanted to put some sort of biblical uh, ref like reference, like, you know, I'm not religious, so whoever was holding the lamb was the one I was eyeballing. But every, everything that I found for making stained glass windows, it was more about the lighting. I, I, I easily spent nine hours trying to figure out the glass for the convent. And eventually uh, I just got way too frustrated with it and in a nerd rage moment said, screw it. And I purchased a whole bunch of glass um, textures, materials on the marketplace. I think for like 10 bucks, 15 bucks. I've got a lot and I can use, you know, use them in many, many things. So it's not a loss. Kind of wish I hadn't done it, but it's done it is what it is. So, you know, I've got a good frame of reference and a lot of this stuff there in, in Unreal Engine 4, there's many, many ways to do a lot of there's many ways to do several different things or almost everything. And I know what I did was very primitive. You could see over here where I kind of screwed it up. I think you could see it. You could see that here, this slab, this should be a little, this slab here should be a little bit more forward. You can see that gap. That's one of the, and of course it's right here. That's what happens when you take one slab, copy it and move it. It's, it's slightly, instead of keeping it level, it slightly adjusts it. But there's much, I'm sure there's much better ways to go about it. But what I did was I created three sizes of slabs and put them on the wall. I counted the amount of slabs that were in the game and tried to match that. Trying to just copy it was, was a failure. So there's, it's a little bit bigger. And I had to do that because of the room scale. You know, when you look at the beds, for example, the amount of distance from this bed to this bed was roughly about that. So everything had to feel natural and just trying to, to adjust, make all these little adjustments was so tedious and time consuming because you have to, you have to go in, place your object, jump into virtual reality mode, put your headset on, walk around, get a feel for it but as tedious and as hard as it is I'm, I'm addicted to it it's it's a lot of fun i can't wait to do a whole lot more and as you can see you know i could go up to any object and i go through it i can create what's known as a collision box put it around these objects to where it will not let me do this you know for example if i come out here and i walk up to the door you're not supposed to do this. Oh, look, Prague is deserted. <laughs> so, because every everything that you create is known as a level, and I'm pretty certain one thing that I that you could do, and this is the idea behind all this, is once I'm once I'm comfortable, once I'm done with the convent, once I get the correct carpet that should go in the convent something that I'm not trying to get it perfect but I want it damn close this carpet needs to be some degree of brown or tan and needs to have a huge cross on it <sighs> trying to 
figure out how to make decals so I can slap a biblical poster on that. I haven't figured that out. I know I have to paint that white, which won't be a problem. But then you take what's known as a decal and you, it's like a poster almost, and you slap it on there. But you can see I've got three different pieces and slapping that decal on there and then moving them out. It's, I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to think about that right now. I might nerd rage. But anyway, what I plan on doing is after every detail is done, I'm comfortable with everything that's in here. Okay. What I'll do is I will move on to the next level. The next level would be Prague and Prague would be out here. But instead of creating Prague on this level, extending, oops, that was my TV that I just punched. Instead of creating Prague on the same level to where I could just grab the door, open it, I'm just going to leave this as is as one level and then create some sort of trigger box once I t actually take a look at what a handle in 1100 AD would look like, recreate the handle, I could create what's known as a trigger box, reach in and once I grab it, that activates the trigger and it will load me into a brand new level. And then I'll go out and build prog from there, make destructible items like your barrels, you know, you pull out your sword, destroy the barrel, maybe something falls out or a rat scurries off or something. Because what I found out that I could do is in the program called Blender, I can create my own models, which is what I'm spent most of today learning was how to create my own models and holy shit that's gonna take a long time a long time much longer than learning this because blender is far more complicated as far as creating actual individual models because in blender you could create an entire cgi movie and the, the software is free just like this you could do pretty much the same thing these two programs go hand in hand and <clears throat> excuse me and i could even create my own characters i can animate them so I theoretically could create a Nesca, put her in the corner over here where she is in the game and set it up somehow to when I approach, if I were to approach her, I create a, a trigger box somewhere around her. So if I come with, say I put the trigger box here and I step into that trigger box, it'll activate whatever I want, speech, whatever. I mean, there's just, there's so many different possibilities and I don't really know what direction <laughs> to go with this, but just the fact that, you know, I can create this and walk around the convent Prague. I mean, that's just incredible. You know, it, it's just like fan art, but interactable fan art and having a headset that teleports you into another dimension into a place that you love is just the feeling of that and and just in vr in general i can't describe it to you it's something you have to experience in order to fully appreciate it it's it's unbelievable um and one other thing that was really that you'll notice might have been one of the first things that you even noticed is you can see there's a huge difference in the lighting wow was that <laughs> i still don't even really know much about the lighting and how to set it up i just pretty much went to a tutorial, copied it, so on and so forth. So with the light, the other one, the other video that I had, I put a fire, I put a candle, candle, and I lit all those, those individual pieces because I had no windows or anything like that. And being in an enclosed space, you're not going to get really any light from the outside with no windows. It'll just be pitch black. So, I set up what's called a point light on the fire, a point light on the candle, a point light on the candle, and you can increase the intensity of the light. That's where the lighting was come from in the last one. This one is quite a bit different. Let me back up a little bit here so I don't headbutt my TV. So when you look out the side here, you can see we are at the edge of the world. Checkmate, you flat earth bastards. Just kidding are round earth bastards sorry joke failed moving on but anyway as you can see out here you know i've got a skybox 
that's out there. And what I did, you can't see it in the preview, but I have what's known as a directional light right outside these windows here in the distance. And you could rotate the light to point it in any direction. And what I have it, how I have it set up is it's pointing directly at the windows because that's the time of day that I want. And you could actually have it set up, which I don't because I haven't quite figured that out, but you could set up that directional light and you, the sun will move along with that directional light to represent the time of day. So you could, you know, see out the window, see the sun when it's there. And then you adjust, when you adjust it, you see the, the dynamic shadows. But what I couldn't understand at first was, okay, well, the light should be shining in and it should just shine right here and the rest of this should be really dark. Well, if you were to look around your house or anything, you'll notice that there are, there, the shadows are somewhat lit. Then you have these much more lit areas, but you could still see everything. I'm like, wait, how does that represent it in the game? Well, there's a sphere that I have right up here that you can't see that illuminates everything and it represents the reflected light coming in and that's how all this other stuff is lit and of course it's it's intelligent enough to understand where shadows would be based on objects it's crazy it's 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 crazy detailed <laughs> i don't really know what but one thing that i do want to do that i have noticed in the game is each window you can see sunlight shining through and you see a little atmospheric fog going through that light what i'd have to do is i have to set up what's called a spotlight on these windows and then put the atmospheric fog in there but that's that's way down the line that's way above me at the moment so i'll go ahead i'll stop rambling i just wanted to give a quick update on the video show everybody the improvements that are made and I'm going to really stick with this because I can uh, I found out there's quite a bit more stuff that I can do you know through the blender program through Unreal 4 I could even without even doing VR or hell even in VR I could create a scene where I could sit there I could watch Kristoff and Ozra fight I could create that scene if I were to get uh, to that level but that's I mean there's there's just so much stuff I'm I'm definitely going to continue to do all of this and anything any changes that I make whether you know when it, when it gets to the point where I need to add something that's interactable say I take a candle off the altar and throw it I will make sure with White Wolf I will double check with White Wolf to make sure that's okay so they've I have contacted White Wolf they said that the video that I did before, there's nothing wrong with it. That's great. So this is a, basically the exact same thing as the last video, just more advanced. And I will, once I feel I've got something else finished or something else spectacular to share or something I'm really excited about, I will definitely share that. So you guys have a good one. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.